by saying hello to all of you beautiful people. But my mum and dad taught me to never lie, so seeing as you're like a bunch of uh, Muppet Babies rejects that have been <laughs> reimagined by Tim Burton, I'll just settle for hello. <laughs> um, I'm always proud of Nottingham, especially when we make the news. I'm not sure if anybody's seen it lately, but our latest claim to fame is that we're the new capital for date rape injection. <laughs> now, <laughs> One of my friends, Sally, said to me, and she's a bigger girl, she went, I'm really worried about going out, clubbing or drinking now. It's, it's really putting me off. And I thought, I don't really have the heart to say this to her, but I don't think that she's quite their demographic. <laughs> I've never seen Dave the Rapist go, we've got another one. <laughs> Bring the truck back, come on. Quite recently, the Queen got Prince Edward to go and visit the church. What a mistake! We've got Prince Andrew. When's he going to be any more use? He could have gone there, shared tips with them, gone halves on a choir girl, maybe an altar boy. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the Queen, it looks like it very well could be her last year on earth. So I really hope that they get all the family round, her sons, grandsons, cousins, everybody, everyone that's related to her, I hope they all come round and wish her a good time. Maybe Harry will come as well. <laughs> it might very well be the last Christmas speech before she's drawn back up to the lizard from other planet. So it very well could be the Christmas speech this year is just, farewell, bitches. <laughs> now, I like to watch a lot of TV, probably explains the fact all. And a lot of it's watched with my missus, and it's amazing. We watch a lot of old shit, probably because I'm old and, you know, the older you get, the less you remember new shit, so you just keep treading the same ground. If anyone can remember a show called Unsolved Mysteries, that's one of our favourites. You start off, and a guy walks on, dressed like a police officer, big long coat, Robert Stack, and he's like, tonight on Unsolved Mysteries. We have the missing story of a young girl fell down a well and was never found again. Followed by that, we have a story about a ghost. You could call it solved mysteries when my missus is watching it with me. Because the minute we get to that, she goes, Robert, I can solve this one. There's no fucking ghosts! <laughs> we also watch one called Fact or Fiction. Very similar, but what they do is they tell you five stories. Some of them are bullshit, some of them are real. Can be all sorts of shit. It's stuff like, and I'm ripping these off from it. One was a guy, somebody came in, tried to rob him, he fell down the stairs, the gun bounced, somehow turned over, shot the robber in the face. And the idea is you watch this and you're like, going, oh, is that real, is it not real? Mm. Again, it inevitably turns around to ghosts. There's one of them, and it's a guy has took off from his plane, it started leaking fuel, somehow the plane's come around in a circle on its own while he's unconscious, it's landed, and he's found his dad's dog tags in the cockpit. And the question is, is this fact or fiction? The answer is it's fucking bullshit, that's what it is. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> fucking bullshit. And what do you think it was, fact or fiction? It was a fucking fact. <laughs> so she's there going, it's not fact, it's fucking not! <laughs> Who checks this shit? Where have they got it from? And um, that's basically TV for us. You see Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. anymore? Right. Yes. Basically Iron Man type shit, but it's all the normal boring people that go to the office, fill in the paperwork, but somehow get in amazing problems. But watching this, you know, obviously there's people that can fly, there's people that can shoot fucking flames out of their hands, the whole shebang. We're watching it and there's a term, suspension of disbelief, which basically means you're willing to turn part of your brain off and accept stupid shit that happens as reality in order to enjoy the show. And we're watching it and all this shit's flying around and a bloke sends this woman through a portal and she ends up on an alien planet. All she's got is an iPhone. She keeps turning this iPhone on day after day, seeing if she's got a text message somehow. My missus don't mind the jetpacks and shit, this fucking iPhone would not last that long. It's a fucking battery. <laughs> And you know, I found it's a bit funny that Steve Jobs' short lifespan was a bit of a connection to the battery life on his phone. <laughs> but see, man. 
I can't help having sick obsessions with things. One of them, Madeline McCann. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's very low hanging fruit for a comedy show, but fuck it out. I'm not sure how old she is. Vaguely, my daughter would be the same age as her, I think, maybe. And every so often they do the old reconstruction photos. This is what she'd look like at six, this is what she'd look like at eight. I can't help but think that we can't be that far from the Sun Sunday Sport pastry porno picture of us. <laughs> With deep fake technology, we've only got to be five years away from fucking Madeline Just Alice. I've heard that it really culminates with Madeline McCann, backdoor action number eight. That's been fucking shit in every I couldn't help reading this book though. Fucking, this is the one wrote by the mum. If you're writing a book about the kid you, well I can't really say kill can I, that gets libelous. But would you include these facts? The majority of completed child abductions are parental family abductions, with 16% involving abduction by a stranger. It's a little bit too much like O.J. Simpson's book on I didn't do it, but if I did do it, this would be how I'd do it to me. <laughs> the majority of abducted children are not taken to be killed, and murder in these circumstances is a rare event. An estimated 100 incidents occur in the USA every year. Of those victims who are murdered, over 70% are dead within the first three hours. This book came out two and a half years after Mandela went missing. And the funds are supposed to go to the Fine Madeline Fund. It's fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what's paid for their house and we paid for it. <laughs> fucking outrage. <laughs> the thing that really gets me, and the reason I fucking take the piss out of the whole Kate McCann thing, just think it through in your head. Get rid of Portugal, make it Butlins. <laughs> Get rid of a tapas bar, make it Burger King. <laughs> Imagine yourself, three kids, in a bottling chalet, you think, ah, oh, fuck it, I could really do with a whopper. You go, your kids are abducted, fucking killed, social services, they're not going to go, here's a load of money, go look for it. They're going to go, you think you're keeping kids, you're other fucking two are coming with me. <laughs> They'll be fucking gone faster than you could turn around. Then again, Kate and Jerry McCann have got a fucking excellent thing they can say when the other kids aren't behaving. Go tidy your room. I don't want to. You could disappear, you know. We well, didn't have a and we got away with it. <laughs> but no, it's uh, What can you say? It's a sad state of affairs. When basically because you're a doctor you get away with it. But then again, police officers are about the same really, aren't they? <laughs> when we were asked earlier what's a police officer's favourite job, I thought it was going to say driving a van and abducting a girl. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is, you know, maybe it's got more grace than to admit it. It's a bit like when you see milk cartons with fucking missing kids on. I think, fucking hell, they're in a van somewhere, aren't they? <laughs> A bit dark, like, but, you know. Yeah. Oh, does that need on? <laughs> well, thank you very much, you've been wonderful. <laughs>